Please introduce yourself to the jury. My name is Blaine Lannon. Right, and your last name is L uh, A N N A N. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Lannon, where do you live? Uh, I currently live in Grangeville, Idaho. Okay. And you say currently, have you sort of spent the last year or so, as I understand it? Uh, three years. I left on a healing journey, um, and my wife and I have been traveling to uh, farms and intentional communities. So living in an RV across America? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you have children? I do, two grown children. And um, you also have some military service? Is that yes, correct? sir, I do. And could you please tell the jury about that military service? Uh, 1985 to 1990 in the uh, United States Army. Um, long-range surveillance, and then uh, 90 and 91 in the Alaska Army National Guard, and then 2003 to 2005 in the Washington Army National Guard. So you'd actually served in the Army from 85 to 90? Yes, sir. And then actually, and then re up later and served again from 03 after, to after 9 11. I, I got back in. Um, and as I understand it, you, you have a, a bit of history from that with post-traumatic stress disorder? Yes, sir. Uh, I suffered an event um, in 1988, um, and that was the primary cause of, of my PTSD. And has that also led to some issues with drugs? I've, I've uh, I battled with addiction for four decades. And during that battle, um, have you had some relapses? Uh, more than I can count. All right. And at some point, that path led you to living at the uh, Five Star Veterans Center? Is that yes, correct? sir. Um, in 2019, uh, I relapsed after three years clean and sober and got arrested um, in Jacksonville for attempting to purchase narcotics. It was a drug arrest? Yes, sir. And as part of that arrest, were you referred to the Veterans Treatment Court? Yes, sir, I was. And did you have a mentor? Uh, David Abramowitz. And uh, when approximately did you did you begin to reside at the Five Star Veterans Center? Um, October 2019. September, October 2019. Do you know Mr. Patrick McDowell? Yes, I do. Uh, how do you know him? Uh, met Patrick in Veterans Treatment Court. I met him the first time. He was in the, the Matrix program. And then... Um, not long after I got in, he had gotten released from Matrix. And uh, as a part of when people move into Five Star, they connect veterans that have been there before um, with veterans coming in. So Dave made a point to, to connect Patrick with people like Daniel and I that were already living there. Would you say you became friends? Yes, sir. So you became good or close friends during that? Um, we, had, we had a lot of close conversations about uh, our, our trauma and uh, the things that we, um, that we deal with. We talked a lot about our kids. Um, and we talked a lot about wanting to get and stay clean and sober so we could be in our kids' lives. Did he seem sincere to you during that? Absolutely. Time? He seemed like he genuinely was committed to Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Um, did he seem like someone who respected law enforcement at that time? Absolutely. Um, had he talked to you about that? Um, I, I don't think we discussed it specifically, but uh, I, people in the military carry themselves a certain way, and we have a certain respect for authority and law enforcement. So, no, I never saw anything in Patrick that would have ever given me any idea that he didn't respect people in authority. Okay. But during that time, you're, you're, you're living there together at veterans, uh, the Five Star Veterans Center. Uh, you're participating together in the Veterans Treatment Court. Yes, sir. Correct. And um, is it fairly intensive with the counseling and the drug testing that's going on? Uh, in phase one, I recall getting, getting drug tested three to four times a week. Um, it, it decreased over time. But initially, it would up for the first like three months. It would be three to four times per week. And is there in-person counseling that's going on regularly? Yes, sir. Um, I had a, a individual psychiatrist, psychologist, um, case management staff at Five Star. I felt wrapped. I felt like I had 
a lot of services. If it was not for Veterans Court, I would be dead. Did you feel like there was a lot of accountability prior to COVID? Absolutely. Um, if I wouldn't have had that accountability early on in my recovery, I would not be here. All right. Then, of course, March 2020 is when everything stops. Yes, sir. Um, I didn't have uh, any type of urine analysis f from March until the end of June. And then we stopped, we stopped immediately going to the courthouse. And then when we started back up again, they sent us to a private company that were doing mouth swabs um, instead of actual UAs. And the, and the, I'll also share that the, the, as addicts, we get very good at, at faking urine tests. Um, I was very successful at it in a previous experience. And in Veterans Treatment Court, they, they watch you very closely to make sure that you aren't faking any tests. So there, there's a lot more accountability in that program that I, that I had ever had. During COVID, did, did you yourself relapse? As I well? did. I had a, I had a brief relapse. Um, I white knuckled it until the end of June. Uh, and then I had a very brief relapse. Is there anything else you'd like this jury to know about Mr. McDowell before making their decision in this case? Um, when, when Daniel called me and told me what happened, it made me physically sick. Um, it still bothers me a lot. Um, it's, it's not something that I ever would have imagined that Patrick would do to somebody. But that's not the Patrick McDowell you knew when y'all no, were sir. going through Veterans Treatment Court. No, sir. Uh, was there a bench behind um, Veterans Treatment Court where you two would sit and talk about um, your life? Outside of Five Star, uh, there was a bench in, in the back, um, the back parking lot. And yeah, that's where a lot of us would sit and talk. Okay. And that's where you talked about his, his kid and trying to get clean for the building, yeah. building the relationships? We were, to, we were discussing our kids and we were also discussing, um, I, I know Patrick uh, had mentioned to me as we were talking about our, our own children, some, some things that he, he witnessed during his time with Triple Canopy. Um, I remember us both like getting emotional and teary kind of like I am right now. Um, in, during that conversation. It was very difficult for him. Uh, that, was, that was a conversation that involved children that had been injured. We were, we were discussing having our own children and having to see other people's children injured and maimed and blown, blown up and those kind of things. I don't have no further questions. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, um, before we get to cross-examination, one of our jurors, do you, do you need some water, ma'am? We, we can get you some water before we, we get restart. It's, no, it can be, you're trying to hold it back and understand. It's okay, it's that time of year, to, it's, that, it's also that time of year where We're going to get, wait for some water, sir, or do you want me to? Yeah, he's, he's going to. Yeah, yeah why don't we? There's just water right back there. <laughs> well, he may be in search of a bigger cup. So why don't you ask some, a couple questions and we'll, we'll get, get the water for you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. You stated you discussed Patrick's trauma during your time. We had a few brief conversations about experiences that we had each had with trauma. Okay. And I think you had accounted the time in Triple Canopy where he shared with you on the bench the trauma that you witnessed with children. It, it was a less than five-minute conversation. Uh, we were reflecting on 
being in our own children's lives and the trauma that he experienced. I don't know if I'm articulating well enough. Um, having our own kids and seeing other kids maimed. No, I, and I think I understand what you're saying. Hold on one second. Aside from that experience in Triple Canopy, did he share anything else with you about the trauma he experienced in the Middle East? Our, our conversations about that were, were pretty brief. What do you remember from those conversations? Um, I remember Patrick wanting to get clean and sober so that he could be there for his kids, and he was very committed to that. I'm not sure you're understanding what I'm asking. Okay. I understand what you just said, okay. but you said you had conversations about the trauma that he experienced while he was in the Middle yes, East. Sir. What specifically do you remember this defendant telling you about that trauma in the Middle East? Um, that it affected him, that he struggled with it. But nothing specific about what happened? No. Just that he was struggling, but he did share what with you the one anecdote about the children while in triple camp and this is four years ago yeah. so yeah. let me let me let me because i don't i want i want to i want to make sure what i'm saying is correct um we talked about trauma in general combat trauma things like that he had mentioned to me that during his first trip downrange with the marines he didn't have as much of a struggle than he did with his deployment with a civilian contractor. So there wasn't as much of an issue with what happened during the Marine Corps. It was more what happened at Triple Canopy. Yes. Thank you, sir.